Hello everybody and welcome back to Digital Asset News, where we summarize the top stories in digital assets and cryptocurrencies in bite-sized pieces. So today has a couple stories going on, and this was interesting to me. Uh, the Central Bank of Russia says it would support a cryptocurrency ban, so not only is China getting in on the FUD, but here comes Russia. Second story, Ripple unlocks 225 million worth of XRP out of their escrow account or dumps 1 billion onto the market. And along with that, the XRP price may drop to 8 cents, since, says a couple of different players in the space. And finally, interesting story, VeChain soars 25% just on news that Microsoft Gamebook is going to pick up one of the games from the 1980s. Interesting stuff, so let's get to it. So the first story, Russia says that central bank says it would support a cryptocurrency ban. So specifically here, it states, and this is from the state-run news agency, RIA, and they state, and this is from information from the central banks, and I quote, if it is decided to ban cryptocurrencies as a means of payment at the legislative level, we consider it appropriate to support this position. So Russia has not come out and publicly stated that yes, they are going to ban all types of cryptocurrencies, which is kind of laughable at this point but if they do come out and say it then of course the central banks will say yes we will also support the banning of cryptocurrencies however it'll be interesting as time goes on to see exactly what the legislative arm says of russia and we know that there's a lot of different mining operations a lot of different cryptocurrencies coming out of russia supporting supporting cryptocurrencies digital assets and also investing so for the legislative arm to come back in and say yeah we're gonna ban cryptocurrencies i don't know it might happen, might not. Moving forward, moving down, article goes on to read that back in October, the head of the Russian Central Bank, Elvira Nabulina, revealed that after conducting a research, conducting a research, the financial institutions didn't see a strong reason to launch a national cryptocurrency, and weren't investing in cryptocurrencies is risky. Of course, this is from the central banks. How many of them will come out and publicly to cry and say yes this is a good position to invest in cryptocurrencies and we believe that cryptocurrencies and digital assets will be a the lion's share of the financial institutions moving forward none of them will say that especially right now and especially talking about stable coins so moving on the article also states according to the ria now this is from elvira nabulina still and when she's talking about cryptocurrency uh, she goes on to state that worldly wisdom that free cheese only in a mousetrap is easily earned money quickly leaves. So another um, mouse and cheese type of analogy, same thing that Warren Buffett said, which was uh, Bitcoin is uh, rat poison squared. So it seems like the old institutions, the old money, uh, especially the central banks, they're coming out and they're saying that how bad that the cryptocurrencies are. And of course, I can understand their position. I mean, look, if I had a product and something comes along that is better, cheaper, more usable, and people are more interested in using it, uh, that is a, a blow to my product, to my business. And I'm going to try to do the things that I want to do to keep me relevant in the space. So if I am a central bank i'm definitely going to do or say things like this to keep my foothold in the area we will see what happens as time goes on moving forward next up ripple unlocks 225 million worth of xrp and dumps them on the community so 225 million worth of xrp equals to about 1 billion now in case you don't don't know i actually didn't know this myself but uh, xrp every single month they release 1 billion 1 billion xrp from its escrowed wallets. So the question that I had was, why do they do this, and how often they're going to do this, and is is there a limit to what's going to happen? So, if you look over at the uh, at Ripple.com, they have a great quarter three markets report, and they talk about their their history of why they do it and how it's going to all uh, come about. So a little history. It says when the XRP ledger began in 2012. 100 billion units of XRP were created. Of course, uh, XRP is pre-mined. It's not like Bitcoin where uh, it is a mining process and it starts from the beginning at zero. They've already pre-mined 100 billion. So 100 billion units were created and no more XRP will ever be created. We will see. The available XRP supply decreases over time as small amounts are destroyed to pay transaction costs. And then it states Ripple was gifted a portion of this XRP 
and periodically sells a small of that into the market. So real quick in this report, it's going to go on to state that there is a smart contract and what it allows it allows Ripple to do or the ledger itself to do is to take 1 billion XRP and to put it into the market for sale. So what will happen is now we know that every month 1 billion XRP does not get bought up. So what, ha what happens with the unused portion is it goes back into a wallet or into escrow. They have 55 billion. They're going to release it every month or 1 billion every month. That'll go for 55 months. So let me do some quick math. So after about four four and a half years what's going to happen then so any unused portion each month will go back into an escrow account and on the and on the 56th month they will begin again to release 1 billion worth of ripple onto the market so if we can say that out of that 1 billion let's say 300 million is snatched up so now we're going to have around 700 million that's going to go in back into that escrow which is going to be sold in the 56th month so if we're thinking to ourselves well when is the price of xrp going to go up as demand goes up as they get more partnerships things will start to increase in price however that xrp will still be onto the market every single month so we'll see moving down states here ribble publicly announced our intention to shift to a more conservative volume benchmark for our xrp sales because there was a huge slump and it states right here let me scroll down ah here it is so for quarter three our total xrp sales were 66 million that was in quarter three versus 251 million in the previous quarter so quite a huge drop off from quarter over quarter let's see what happens at the end of q4 how much they've actually sold but moving forward moving down states here that 3 billion xrp were released out of cryptographic escrow of course every month 1 billion gets released so 3 billion makes sense and then out of 3 billion 2.3 billion xrp were returned to the escrow obviously what we talked about so at the 56th month that is part of the xrp ledger or xrp coins that are going to be released out of escrow so they've sold essentially 700 million that's pretty good 700 million xrp keep them going down going down and again it states in quarter three three billion xp were again released uh 2.3 billion were returned and subsequently put into new escrow contracts the majority of the unused portion of the 700 million xrp not returned to escrow was being held in operating wallets at the end of the quarter i find it interesting that they use the word operating wallets at the end of the quarter so the big debate right now is is xrp a security something that people can hold and do nothing with and allow it to increase in value and then sell it off a security or does it have some type of function which it does if you're doing cross-border payments if you're tokenizing assets then if that's what you're using it for that's the big debate and we will see what happens right now there is a court case uh, brought against xrp and ripple uh, brought against ripple excuse me where a couple of investors came forward and said hey we got wrecked because uh, no one told us about this specific project which i find it odd that it's always somebody else's fault and not the investor's fault for these types of mishandlings you know my position on this uh traders and people who get into this for quick money are going to be flushed out rather quickly over time uh, my position is just to buy and hold anyhow moving forward report talks about the spread of misinformation or fud and this is what i didn't know and i found it very interesting that twitter apparently is a place with a lot of bots who would have known but they've done some research they say bots on twitter contributed to the propagation of fud across the digital asset industry they comprised 49 percent of the share of conversation about bitcoin 71 percent about ethereum and 50 percent about xrp bots now this got to me thinking if someone someone out there has to set up these bots they have to tell it what to do what to say so if you have these people and this is a, a pretty vast network if you think about it 50 percent uh, are have put up bots to negatively spread f fud same thing with bitcoin and 71 percent about ethereum who did it and why well usually if you're trying to spread misinformation um, it's to keep the price down so you can buy a lot of that item and uh, get rich later as the price goes up
Now, if you just have your own opinion, uh, like we do here or like other places on Twitter and YouTube, then yeah, that makes total sense. You know, you're going to share your opinion in one format, not set up a bot, not set up all these different uh, mediums to display misinformation because you have nothing better to do. Uh, there's a reason that these bots have been set up, and I believe it is just to manipulate the market. So it talks about in Q3 bots been more active in conversations about XRP with a number of unique bots rising and engaging in messages related to. Uh, there's two or three. FUD number one is dumping allegations. And we talked about that. XRP dumping a billion XRP or Ripple dumping uh, a million XRP on the market and talks about uh, the truth, the allegations. FUD number two, price manipulation. Uh, which is kind of odd that bots are talking about price manipulation when they themselves are there put specifically to manipulate the price. I didn't know if they just, uh, I mean, obviously you have to verify your sources and see where all this information is coming from. And they base this on an Indiana University research. So let's take a look. It's called a bottometer. So if you go to bottometer.iuni.iu.edu, which is out of the Indiana University. So it's a joint project of the Network Science Institute and the Center for Complex Networks and Systems Research at Indiana University. So if you have a Twitter account, uh, you can take a look at all this stuff about and their statistics about what the bots do and which parts are negative and, and how they score it. So interesting article. Moving forward real quick, I found this quick one and it was about uh, Tezos and Bitcoin have outperformed other major cryptos in 2019. I didn't wasn't aware that Tezos was doing so well. So this was compiled by Alistair Mine. <laughs> Alistair Milne. Year-to-date performance in the major cryptos. Bitcoin is up 92% over the year. Ethereum is only 7. Ripple is down 40% over the year. How awful. Of course, this is someone who does not like Ripple, I can tell. Uh, or XRP, because they say it included, included for the lols. Bcash is up 34%, Litecoin 48%, and so on and so forth. Cardano's down 10%, and Tezos 160%. So we looked at it in order of performance. Tezos is up 160, Bitcoin 92, Litecoin, Bcash 34, Monero 16, Ethereum plus 7, and then, and then the losers, EOS, Cardano, Tron, Ripple, Stellar. Wow, way down for the year. So let's see what happens. Usually what happens is the harder it falls, the higher it goes. So we will see, hopefully, these, those products make a rebound. Next up, Trader States, XRP price may drop to $0.08. Cents. Ah, my favorite, technical analysis. So let's see what they say. So right now, it is December 2nd, 2019, and we're looking at XRP price around $0.22 cents or so. These traders state, first of all, there's always going to be a group of people that just feel like everything's falling and it's the worst thing ever. And there's a small, and of course that makes sense, right? Because as the price goes down, we feel that. We feel that in our reptilian brains. It's a fight or flight. I'm losing all my money. I need to get out now. But there's some people who can go against the grain. And whether they're right or not, they can, are happy about it and say, you know what, this is great. Uh, instead of me having to buy this asset at full price, I'm getting a discount. It's 50% off, 75% off, 90% off, or whatever it is. And what they do is they buy the dips. Uh, I am not the type of person to come in here and just buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. I just cost average. So it doesn't matter what the price is. Uh, every week it is the same thing. Uh, XRP $25, Chainlink $25, and Ethereum $25. So we'll see what happens in a year's time. But I can say this though, for Bitcoin to double, which I believe it will, especially coming up in the, uh, the halving of May 2020 and a year afterwards, it's going to take some work and it's going to take some time, but I believe that it will double, even triple. Now for XRP and Ethereum, Chainlink especially, EOS and everything else, um, for it to double doesn't seem that hard because look, right now we're trading Bitcoin at around $7,200. All time high was around 20, so that we're looking at a 3X. However, the last time XRP for its all time high was about $3.50, 60 cents, 40 cents, somewhere around there. So if it's trading at 23 cents right now, how realistic is it to think that it could go to 46 cents or 75 cents or even a dollar? So I think it's a pretty good, pretty good chance. It's pretty easy to get there. That's why I think that there's more upside on uh, some of these smaller cap coins. All right, and then coming up to Joker at Kia Crypto, he says XRP is trading below 23 cents, and it's great. Never felt so good. Charts indicate a dip to 8 cents to 13 cents is possible. More it dips, the harder it pumps. We will see. 
So another technical analysis. Now, honestly, I'm not a fan of TA. Everybody knows that in this channel. But I do believe with what I just read about the bots, I believe in people. And and the charts can only tell you so much. But there is a negative, definitely a negative sentiment that you can just get a feeling for as you come across all the different YouTube videos, the Twitter accounts, even articles written about XRP. Very negative stuff. So uh, over the time, over time, as everything else starts to dip, I believe that uh, XRP will dip. I don't know if it's going to be to 8 cents, 13 cents. We'll see. But uh, definitely it's not going to say, I don't believe it's going to stay at 22, 23 cents. It's going to go below 20. And that's just a random guess. Again, it doesn't matter to me because I'm going to buy at 23 cents. I'll buy at 8 cents. I'll buy at 75 cents. I'll buy at $2. That's how it goes. Moving forward, I found this great website. And it's been talked about uh, different other channels. But it's, it's coinfairvalue.com. And coinfairvalue.com, it states at the very top, it says we don't speculate. Fair values displayed here are based on current usage of each coin. They don't contain speculation on future variations of their usage. We leave speculation to investors. Market data is refreshed every 10 minutes. So I think this is a website that uh, all types of cryptocurrency and uh, digital asset users can, can rally behind. Because pretty much a lot of it is things that, whatever the price is now, they believe it's actually uh, a lot higher. So let's take a look. Well, there's one thing, US dollar, fair value is a dollar, price a dollar, all right. The Euro, XRP here, it says that the price currently 21, 22 cents, but the fair value is a dollar 46. Oh, that'd be great, we'll see what happens. Bitcoin, the price is 7,200. Eh, fair value is 6,000, oh, sure, okay, that's what they say. Not really too on board with that, but everything else pretty much is a lot higher or a little bit higher than what it states. So the price for Ethereum, 149, I think it should be 181. Stellar, it's at a nickel, which they think it should be 14 cents. Binance coins at $15, I think it should be at $68. Wow, something to look into. Bcash, which I'm not a fan of, but they do state, hey, it should be double than what it is. What do you think of that? Chainlink, I believe this very much. $2.16, it should be around seven. Bitcoin still should be visiting $100, what it's selling at now, but it should be at 227 and so on and so forth. So uh, depending on what kind of um, asset that you're into or what kind of fanboy you are really about, this coin, fairvalue.com, it gives an interesting insight as to what it really should be. And I think as the Bitcoin halving comes up in May, uh, we're going to see these prices and blast forward beyond those, especially a year after the Bitcoin halving. So we'll see. And our last story, VeChain, the price soars 25% on Microsoft Gamebook News. I found this fascinating that a project, oh, let's get into it. So after the news of launching the Way of the Tiger Gamebook on blockchain in alliance with Microsoft was announced, the VeChain price surged 25%. So I was looking at this and I was like, what the hell is a gamebook? I don't, uh, never heard that term. So it's, it's the return of the gaming legend. So I'm thinking about, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe this is like a game back in the 90s late 90s or something like that but it says the author of the original famous game jamie thompson will be working with Eidos and fable game making companies the software giant microsoft will be joining them too the game to be released on v chain thor ledger was selected for its large scalability hmm. uh, the roadmap the project promises the game to be relaunched publicly next year so this is news about a project that really hasn't really taken off and next year it'll be available so i thought i found it fascinating that a project can go up 25 percent just on news of something that's happening with microsoft um interesting you know like we we hear all these different uh, positive stories about bitcoin about ethereum uh, their partnerships xrp and their multiple partnerships and the price really doesn't budge or goes down but then we have something about a game book and it goes up 25 percent uh, that's the market that we've uh, decided to to speculate in. So, real quick, I was wondering what the hell's a game book, and uh, I looked this up on Amazon, and this is from the 1980s. So this is, I thought a game book was some type of digital type of game, but it's like a choose your own adventure. For those of you who are older, you'll understand. Those of you who are younger, you don't, I don't know if they even had these when you guys were growing up, but it was like uh, you would read the book. 
and then you would look at the content and then you would say if you want to do this or get this upgrade turn to page 125 if not turn to page 138 or whatever it was so that was like so a game book is like a choose your own adventure so they're taking this uh, Jamie Thompson's book and turning it into a game on V Chain Thor the ledger and that is what pumped the price by 25% truly amazing so anyhow that is it for today uh, guys if you like the content please give it a thumbs up greatly appreciated and if you want more of this go ahead and subscribe and I'll notify you when the next hopefully daily video comes out thanks for watching I truly appreciate it have a great day